Morning, Strong Tower. What a great day to be found in the house of the Lord. It was a little foggy outside this morning when I came in, but thank God that we're here to celebrate him, to give him praises, and to just give him all the glory for everything he's done for us, no matter how small and how large. Give God thanks each and every day. Please stand for the hearing of the word. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. From the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength because of your adversaries to make the enemy and the revengeful cease. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is, a man, what is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the works of the, her, your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I read to you Psalms 8 in the entirety um, chapter of Psalms 8. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his most holy word. Love ye the The maker of heaven and earth, where all good and perfect gifts come from you. God, we come this morning telling you thank you. Lord, we can't say nothing else. We can say thank you. You woke us up this morning, gave us the activities of our limbs. Able us to move about our homes. God, we say thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for the roof over our head. Thank you, Father, for the clothes that we put on our backs. God, we just say thank you this morning. We just can't thank you enough. We thank you most of all this morning. For your son, Jesus, who we're here to celebrate this morning. Oh, God, he left his home in glory. Came down through 42 generations. Died for your sins and for my sins. Hung on an old rugged cross. Oh, God, he didn't have to do it. But I'm glad he did. Oh, yes. He looked beyond our faults yes. and saw our needs. He saw that we needed a Savior. Oh, God, 
and he died to pay the death penalty of sin. Staying in the grave three long days. But early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Oh, thank you, Lord, for giving me a right to eternal life again. Thank you, God, for not leaving us alone. And we come this morning into your house of prayer to lift up our hands and lift up our voices and give you praise and give you thanks for all you've done to us. Oh, God! all in my body but I told the devil you didn't make me you don't know all about me if I could put one foot out of my bed and on the floor I'm going to give God some praise well I thank you Lord he didn't leave us this far just to leave us alone and now, Lord, have your way, God. Have your way, God, in this house today. Have your way, God. Lift up our spirits. Dry tears from our crying eyes. Oh, thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless our pastor, God. Bless our pastor, God. Keep your loving arms around him. Oh, God, fill him with your Holy Spirit. Enable him to preach your word so that we can be fed. And now, Lord, now, Lord, when I'm through praying down here, when I'm through singing down here, when God called my name, I'm going home. I'm going home. Where no graves are done. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. We say hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Can you raise your hand and tell God thank you? Thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you Come on, tell him thank you. Hallelujah, God.
Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything that I need. He helps me to rest in the meadow's grass, and He leads me beside the quiet streams. He restores my failing health and he helps me to do what honors him the most that's why I'm safe that's why I'm safe that's why I'm safe oh safe in his arms me to rest in the meadow's grass and it leads me beside the quiet streams he restores my failing health and he helps me to do what honors him the most that's why I'm safe that's why I'm safe that's why I'm safe safe in his arms oh, when the storm when the storms of life is raging anybody going through something but listen and the billows you know what they do they roll, but you know what? I'm glad he shall hide me. I'm so glad he shall hide me. Anybody so glad? Listen, man. 
Master, Savior, Jesus. Listen, he's like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim, kings and kingdoms, they will all pass away, but there's something about that name Jesus something about it Jesus Jesus just open up your heart there's something about the name master is he your master he's my savior let all heaven and earth proclaim Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The heavens and earth proclaim. You know what? Kings and kingdoms, including this earth, they will all pass. Away, Woo. but I want to be found with them. Oh, but there's something Woo. about the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sing it with me, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 hey. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Sing it with me if you know it, everybody. Come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. This ain't about me, but it's about all of us praising him. Come on. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, come on. It's something about that name. Deliverance happens. Jesus. If you're broken hearted, come on, Jesus. Oh, he's able to mend your heart, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Somebody say, my marriage is on the edge, Jesus. Oh, he's the answer to everything, yes. If your kids are acting up, call on. Somebody said I'm suffering, but Jim, my body is rocking with pain, Jim. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Uh, I'm about to lose my house. Uh, I'm about to lose my car, but I die. Shame to call his name. Oh, help me sing it one more time. Yes. Just, just break the music. I want to hear the house. Everybody say it, Jesus. Just keep on saying, Jesus, Jesus. In the midnight hour, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The man that died on the cross for you and me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, he's Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Late in the midnight hour, Jesus. When I'm all alone and I don't have nobody to talk. 
turn to. I'm here to let you know you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Somebody feel like they're alone, but you're not alone. You're not all in it by yourself, yes. You know, uh, when you're even laying next to your spouse, you feel like you're alone sometimes. Uh, uh, but I'm here to let you know you're not alone. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Try it once again. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Look at your neighbor say, I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to lift his name high. Look at somebody else and say, I don't know what you're here for, but if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, somebody ought to be giving him some praise this morning. Somebody give him some glory this morning. Somebody give him some glory this morning. Someone, come on, give him some glory this morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Father, you, we honor you with the fruit of our lips. We can say it as Jeremiah said, great is thy faithfulness. It's not because of us or what we have done. But it is because of you that we are here today. We are here with a variety of challenges, but the common answer is you. So God, I ask you that you will use me. Just speak to me and through me at the same time. I want no glory, God, it all belongs to you. There is a name that's above every name and that is the only name that matters. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask it all, amen. It is good to see each and every one of you this morning. God has been good, God is good, and God will be good. Can you give God some praise this morning just for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy? We thank God for our music ministry and it has blessed us, our uh, wonderful ushers uh, and our deacons and everyone uh, that makes up Strong Tower Ministries. Can we bless God for our wonderful individuals that are sitting on these first two rows that have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? We give God praise and glory because of you. Um, this, is, this was no small feat what you have done. As I said in the back, this was something that Jesus himself has done. And so you have partaken in something that even the Messiah has done. So we thank God for, for each and every one of you. And not only uh, were you able to be baptized today, but now you will take communion on the same day. Somebody ought to give God praise because of that. We thank God. I know my, my mother-in-law is not here. Uh, I don't know if she's able to watch uh, online at and in the ICU, she had a major surgery this week, and we're so glad to know that she is recovering and doing so much better. Amen. Off ventilators, off all kind of stuff. She's doing so much better, and so we are thankful. Uh, I told her yesterday, said, look, you're the only mama I got, and you're going to have to hold it down. 
And so we are so thankful that, that the Lord has touched her body, and we are, we are honoring, uh, honoring him for all that he has done. I don't plan to be before you long, and normally, Rod, when the preacher says this, he's up all day, but I promise I won't be before you long. But we're going to continue our journey through the book of James. So if you can grab your copy of God's Word, let us go to the book of James. We're just going to look at one verse, and we're going to look at just a portion of the verse, and then we'll build uh, around it. James chapter 4, verse number 6. James chapter 4, verse number 6. It is our custom to stand for the reading of the word of God. If you are physically able to do so, we would ask that you will do such, such a thing. Again, James chapter 4, verse number 6. When you have it, say amen. Just still look and say, wait a moment. Amen. James chapter 4. Verse number six, reading from the New American Standard Version of the text, the Bible says this, but he gives a greater grace. That's good. Can you say amen? Can you look at your neighbor? This is your time to engage in the service. Look at your neighbor. Tell him good morning. Good morning to your neighbor. And while you're looking at your neighbor, say neighbor. Today's sermon subject. I need some more grace. Matter of fact, look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I need some more grace. Okay, don't look at your neighbor because they can't give it. Look up to the hills from which cometh your help and say, God, I need some more grace. You may be seated. As James continues this letter to the scattered tribes um, that have been dispersed around Jerusalem, he's writing this particular letter as they continue to face oppression from their rich counterparts. And as he has gone through so much of this letter, when he gets to James chapter 3, he talks about the tongue being a fire. He talks about how no man can tame the tongue and how the tongue sometimes has a mind of its own. He even goes so far to say in the latter part of James chapter 3 that there is such a thing as godly wisdom, but there is also something called earthly wisdom. And depending upon what side of the track you're on, it, it will show what type of wisdom you are following. So as he lays these things out in James chapter number three, he moves into James chapter number four and he begins to take a sharp turn. He all, all, almost begins to sound like he's rebuking uh, this, this scattered tribe that's scattered abroad. He begins to ask some rhetorical questions. He says, what is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? He says, where does all of the strife and the beef come from? Where does all of the wars come from? Where does the battle really lie? It is, is it simply in Russia or Ukraine? No. Is it simply in our communities where we are seeing continuous black-on-black -black violence? No. Is it something that's found possibly in the church house where even blood-bought believers sometimes have beef with one another? No. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. What James is saying, the source of of your wars comes from what's less was resting on the inside of you. He says the greatest battle that you ever can face does not come externally, but the greatest battle that you will ever fight, it will often come on the inside. And that is a challenge for many believers because you look so well and put together on the outside that you would not want your neighbor to know I got a World War III that's going on on the inside of me. As a matter of fact, it's really not World War III. You've moved past World War III some years ago. You're back into some numbers that we can't even count because when you wake up in the morning, you got battles in your mind. When you wake up in the morning, you got battles in your flesh. Paul even said it, the good that I would do. Sometimes, every time I want to do the right thing, evil is always around me. Do I have about five people in the building that just want to be real today? Sometimes you find yourself 
yourself wanting to do what God wants you to do, but when you want to do what God wants you to do, there's this fleshly inclination that sometimes drives you to do the wrong thing. I know you're not going to admit that right now because it's first Sunday and you want everybody to believe you're holy. You have on your white and you have on your Christian clothes and you got on your cologne and everything is looking good, but there is a few people, there are a few people in the building that there is a battle that's going on right now. Matter of fact, some of you went to bed fighting. You didn't fight in the physical, but you fought in the spiritual. You went to bed with problems on your mind. You went to bed with problems in your spirit. You went to bed and your heart was broken. And, J and James is saying that the quarrels and the wars that is happening does not come externally, but is coming within. He begins to even say, that's why you lust and you do not have. <laughs> like, I'm just reading the Bible. It's in verse number two. I, I ain't make it up. He says, you lust and you do not have. And because you lust and you do not have, that's why you commit murder. Not only is it a physical murder that you can commit, but sometimes as we talk and we tied in James chapter three, sometimes you commit verbal abuse on your neighbor. You commit murder by verbally abusing them. Other times you lust and you do not have. James said you, you want it, but you can't have it. You're envious and you cannot obtain it. And the reason why you lust and you can't have, you're envious and can't obtain it is because you got ulterior motives. You got some wrong motives on the inside of you. Just put your seatbelt on. I'm going to be over this in a minute. You got some wrong motives, and every time you go to God asking him for things, he hears you, but he ain't studying about you, because in reality, you're asking God to give you things simply because you want to spend it on your own pleasures. You're asking God to give you the cattle on a thousand hills, not so that you can help somebody, but so that you, you can high cap in front of other people. The problem with many of us is that we want God to bless us so that we can be selfish and do what we want to do. Just kind of let it settle there for a moment. The inward battle. Sometimes we want to be high on the mountain. The inward battle. We want our name to be called. The inward battle. We want to walk and we want everybody to know I'm somebody. And it becomes so powerful that James says that when you pray, God doesn't even answer your prayer because God does not just only hear what you say, but he watches the motives behind what you've said. And I wish that I can say this only happens in the world. Oh, but sometimes it even happens in the church. Sometimes we get so addicted to pride and fame that God is not even answering our prayer because we come to him with the wrong intention. Have you ever had somebody come to you with the wrong intentions? You knew it, they didn't know it, and you had to sit there in front and act as if, now, can't, oh, come on, get to, the, get to the real. I know what you're really trying to do. I know what you're really trying to, suppose God did that to us. <clears throat> James went a little bit further. We're going to get to some good stuff in a minute. Just kind, of, just kind of sit here and take this for a minute. James even goes so far to say he calls us adulteresses. <laughs> God says, we've been in a relationship, but you've been cheating on me. God said, I'm the one that saved you. I'm the one that healed your body. When you ain't had no money, I'm the one that provided for you. When everybody walked off and left you, I stuck closer than a brother. When you didn't have any friends, I was the only one that was there. And now that you got some clothes and, and you got some nice cars that I gave you. Now that you got some nice blessings that I provided. Now you're going to stick your nose up and act like I didn't do it. God says, you're cheating on me. 
God says, even though I don't sleep and slumber, when you think I'm not looking, you going out and having an affair with me. But he says, you're not cheating with just anybody. You cheating on me with the world. You can't get closer to me, God is saying. You can't get closer to me because you can't be close to the world and me at the same time. At some point, you're going to have to make a decision. You can't keep saying thank you, Jesus, in church and cussing your neighbor out when you own the job. I know you raising your hand in praise and worship, but if somebody makes you angry, you raising your hand and it don't have nothing to do with giving God glory. See, I hate when y'all act funny. He says you cheating on me. And he even says that if you choose to make yourself friend of the world, you have made yourself an enemy with God. I don't know if you've ever been in a fight, but you have never been in a fight until you've been in a fight with God. And here's the thing, when you're in a fight with God, you'll never win. He says that when you make yourself a friend of the world, you have made yourself an enemy with God. James says that the source of quarrels and battles among you it comes from within. He says that if you have allegiance with the world, you've made yourself an enemy with God. James says that, that there are times where you ask and you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives. James paints a picture in verses 1 through 5, but I'm glad he gives a remedy in verse number 6. After everything that he has said, the things that we have done, James says, but he gives a greater grace. Okay, all right, all right. I, okay, let me let me try that again, Miss Jessamy. I thought that was going that was gonna be some praise right there. Let me let me let me try this again. Um, after all the wrong that we've done, God gives a greater grace. Okay, I really thought that was y'all. I thought that was gonna get it. Let me try another way. In all of my sinful actions. And all of the things you've done that people still don't know about, God gives a greater grace. Okay, I thought that was going to get it. Y'all making me preach hard. After everything I've done in my life that God has been watching and he hadn't turned a blind eye, but he's just giving you greater grace. Okay, is there any people in the building that can testify, Pastor, I've done some things in my life that I am not pleased with, I'm ashamed of, I still don't know how I'm making it, but yet and still the reason why I'm here today is God has given me a greater grace. I think somebody ought to praise God real quick. Somebody ought to thank him if you know you've been given a greater grace in spite of your sins. In spite of your friendship with the world, in spite of the things you've done, God still has given you a greater grace. I see everybody ain't even praising them. Okay, let me park my bike real quick. Here's the challenge that I have with people, uh, Miss Deborah Spears, is that people can be so ungrateful. How can you come into the house of God, sit there and twiddle your thumbs? Act as if God hadn't done anything for you. When you look back over your life, you can quickly testify that God has given me something that I really didn't deserve. God has given me some grace that fitted and suited my case. Here's what grace is. It's unmerited favor. God has given you something that you don't deserve. 
Now look, let me put a bookmark in my little Easter message real quick. Look at your life and think about the things that God has given you that you know you didn't earn. Your degree didn't get it. You ain't even go to school. Your money didn't get it. You still between checks. But God has given you something that your name couldn't give you. Your cousin and them couldn't give you. Your boss couldn't give you. If it had not been for what God has done for you and you gonna act as if God hadn't done anything, I want somebody to lift up their voice and say, God has given me a greater grace. I love grace. Brother Darius, I thank God for salvation, but right under salvation, I'm thanking him for grace. <clears throat> I thank him because he gives me favor in places that I don't deserve it. Have you ever had God give you something called favor and he's blessed you to put you in places that you could see uh, um, um, on, on my job, uh, me and Rod could talk about it. Um, hope people not looking on my job. Um, but there's something you probably heard about it on your job. There's something called a good old boy club. Um, uh, Y'all heard about that? A uh, good old boy club. Um, um, most of us not included in that. Um, um, you, you, you got to be on the right side of the track. So you got to have the right last name. or You got to know certain people. But then you find yourself in a situation where you in a place that only you know and I know and everybody knows that God elevated you. And when God elevates you, that's when you have to become an expert in praise and say, God, I'm praising you because you've done something for me that I know I could not have done on my own. Is there anybody in the building that can testify, God, you've done some things for me that I know if it had not been for you, I would never have gotten this far. Is there anybody that can take a 15 second praise break and give God some praise for the grace that he's given you? the doors that is open the ways that is made the ways that he has blessed you somebody give him some praise for the grace look at your neighbor and say neighbor I thank him for my grace now look I got about two more minutes before my voice goes completely out <clears throat> so let me put it to you like this God gives you what you don't deserve. Say that once again. God gives you what you don't deserve. I'm going to say that one more time. God gives you what you don't deserve. My voice getting stronger when I say it. God gives you what you don't deserve. Well, Reverend, what did he give me that I don't deserve? I'm glad you asked. In the last breath that you just took, you didn't deserve it. Healing in your body, you didn't deserve it. For you to be saved, you don't deserve it. You should be on your way to hell. You should be sleeping in your grave. But God has given you grace. Somebody ought to thank him for his grace. Look, he even, goes, he even says this. Sister Chelsea, he even says this. God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. In other words, Stacia, God is saying, even though you need grace, I'm not going to give it to you if you're proud. I know my voice going out. You probably didn't hear, so let me, let me hit rewind and say it again. Even though you need it, God said I won't give it. I'm not giving it to the proud. The proud is thinking you can do something without God. The problem with some of us is that God can't bless you because you looking at God eye to eye. Oh yeah. These spirits, I'm going to tell you, there's, there's many that you're so high that when you walk into the building, you think that angels should start clapping. You walk in the building because you got some designer clothes on 
and you look down on people that shopping at Ross and Walmart. Got some good clothes in there, by the way. Shout out to Ross and Walmart. Just because you got a few degrees, now you're looking at people that got a GED. And you're looking down on them. Until you remember that the ones you looking down on has their eyes looking up. And I don't know what you're looking, but I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help is coming from the Lord. So while you looking at God eye to eye, I got my knees on the ground. I got my eyes looking up and say, God, if you don't bless me, I won't be blessed. I, I, yesterday I, I, I went to, uh, I dropped my, we dropped my father-in-law off uh, back to his house. Um, and, and as he, he left the hospital with my mother-in-law, uh, and they got this dog named Bailey. It's actually my sister-in-law's dog that she threw on my in-laws, and now they taking care of the dog. But, li but anyway, um, this dog named Bailey, and little Bailey um, just kind of runs around. And when my father-in-law comes in, um, the first thing that Bailey does, Bailey's tail starts wagging, and Bailey starts looking up. Because um, Bailey started looking up key because my father-in-law begins to feed the dog. Um, and, and that dog knows that anytime Pop comes in the room, all I got to do is look up. And if I look up long enough, he's going to drop some food down my way. The problem with some of us is that when God comes in, you not looking up. But I got, I got some news for you. I need about 35 people in the building that's under the sound of my weak voice that you said, Master, all I need you to do is drop some crumbs down to me. And all I need you to do is bless me. So I need somebody right now to lift up your eyes and begin to look up. And when you look up to God, God says, I'm going to drop some blessings down to you. I'm going to drop some power down to you. I'm going to drop some favor down to you. I'm going to drop the anointing down to you. I'm going to drop some healing down to you. I'm going to drop some grace down to you. Is there anybody that can look up real quick and say, God, I'm like Bailey. Give me and feed me till I won't no more. This may not be for everybody, but I want somebody to look up and say, Say, God, I need you to feed me. God, I need you to bless me. God, I need you to heal me. God, I need you to set me free. I need some more grace. I'm not saying I'm done. I'm not saying you don't have some grace, but I need some more. When you start looking at your life, you say, God, let me tell you what I need. Square footage on the crib, that's cool. Big fancy car, that's fine. Really, I don't need a fancy car. Gas by five and a quarter. <laughs> God, I don't need no more clothes. God, I don't need no more shoes. Sometimes, God, I say, I don't need no more friends. But God, let me tell you what I do need. God, I need some more grace. God, I need some more favor. God, I need some more power. God, I need some more wisdom. God, I know, I, I know you can give me money, but, but I like what Solomon said. I, I, I don't need more money. I just need more wisdom. And as I asked you for wisdom, God gave more money because it's all found in his grace. I apologize for my voice going out, but I hope you hear me loud and clear. And if you didn't hear me, let me sum it all up like this. What you need can only come from God because the text says, Miss Lisa, that he gives greater grace. You didn't earn grace, but he gives it. To our individuals that were baptized on the day, let me tell you something. There's something that only God can give you. It doesn't matter how old you are or young you are. 
You could be the most beautiful thing around or you could be in between. You can be the most popular person in school or nobody can know your name. But what you need can only come from an almighty God. Family, it can't come from people. It can't come from your status. As a matter of fact, just the fact that God would give your doggone butt anything <laughs> ought to make you thank him. When you look at your life and look at all the mistakes you've made, and God still keeps making a way. He keeps on blessing you. Sometimes the only thing you can do is raise your hand and say, God, I just want to thank you for everything you've done for me. God, I want to thank you. I may not have what my neighbor has, but God, I thank you for what you've given me. You've given me a reasonable portion of my health and strength. God, thank you. As a matter of fact, if you're thankful in the building, I want you to stand to your feet. God, I thank you for what you've done. God, I, I thank you for your grace. God, I thank you for your mercy. God, I thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, we thank you. And we honor you for blessing us in ways we didn't deserve. God, we thank you for blessing us with grace and favor. God, we thank you this morning for being so good to us. Deserve it? No, we didn't. But God, we bless you today because you gave not only grace, but you gave it in abundance. Because our sins have been abundant. But your grace was greater than our sins. <laughs> your grace was greater than our problems. God, we thank you. Father, touch that person that needs you today. Touch that brother, that sister, that family, that husband, that wife, that daughter, that child that needs you. And God, we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from you. And we give you glory for your grace. We give you honor for your grace. And Father, for the one that really wants to throw in the towel, God, give them even more grace to handle what they are going through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody that's got grace raining down on them, give them, give them praise and glory and honor. If you're here today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to come and accept him right now. This first Sunday, come on and accept Jesus. The second invitation, if you're here today and you've accepted Christ, but you are in need of a church home, you're looking for a church to join, I want you to come. There's a front row with your name on it. If you're here and you need Christ or you need to join the church, I want to invite you to come. Come on. Come on right now.
Angel, come on. It's not too late. Come on. My God, Mr. Allen, will you please stand? John Allen, please stand. Bishop, as I affectionately call him, has come to accept Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Remain standing. Miss Aurora Sutton, will you please stand? This young woman has come to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And to join the family of the family of Strong Tower. And this must be little Kevin. Okay. So for the both of you. What a grand decision to make. The decision not only to join the local church, which is big and great in and of itself, but to join the family and the kingdom of God. Which means that I believe in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then when I confess with my mouth, according to Romans chapter 10, when I confess with my mouth, and believe in my heart that Jesus died and rose again. The Bible says that we will be saved. No work that we have to do. Jesus did it all on that old rugged cross. 
and got out of the grave for your sins and mine. Do you desire to be saved today? Repeat after me. God, I confess to you that I am a sinner that it is in need of your blood. God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that your son Jesus died for me, rose for me, and now he lives for me and in me. Thank you for saving me this day. And I thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's try this. Let's try this again. Heaven rejoices when one is added to the kingdom. So if one is added to the kingdom and two is added to the kingdom, can we rejoice and give him glory today? Shahida. Shahida. Richards, will you please stand? which is standing in the need of prayer. She lost her mother in 2011 and lost her father this past November. So, Ms. Richards, just a few weeks ago, my mother passed. And still not right and for you to have lost both of your parents I can only imagine what you are feeling but there's some good news for the both of us that God is able to keep us he's able to keep you with tears in your eyes Maybe confusion, not totally understanding. But Miss Richards, I will tell you that God is able to keep and hold you. And this is what also he is able to do. He is able to mend your broken heart. I wish I could tell you that it is easy. But I do know that I can lean on what the scripture says, is that weeping, it may endure for a night, and the night may be a long time, but through the power and the grace of God, that joy is coming in the morning, and you will go through this season, and you will walk out with your head up, and your hands lifted. And say, God, I thank you for keeping me. Father, I thank you for this, your daughter. God, your daughter needs you. Dealing with the loss of both of her parents. God, I ask you that you will give a greater grace for this young woman that is in need of your touch. But God, I thank you because I know that you're not only able to do it, but you're willing to do it. So God, I speak a blessing upon the life of Miss Richards. I ask that you will fill that void. I ask that your presence will be upon her. That you will walk with her during this season. God, I thank you for what you're able to do. And even with tears in her eyes, God, I speak a blessing on this woman of faith. God, touch her as only you can. 
Keep her as only you can. Mend her broken heart. Your word says that blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And comfort this your daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll take it. I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here. Y'all, y'all stand, please. Beautiful young ladies, you are. Is it okay if we, if I pray for you? What is your name, Araya? What is your name? Okay, beautiful names. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these two beautiful young ladies. I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will touch them, Father, as only you can. God, whatever their needs are, God, I ask that you will meet it. God, I ask that you will allow them to be the woman, the women of God that you have called them to be even at a young age. We speak a blessing upon them in the name of Jesus. And we speak that there is no weapon that is formed against them that will be able to prosper. We speak and profess that they are women of God, that they will walk in your wisdom, that they will walk in your ways. They will be lights and vessels in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for this grandmother that has come to bring her grandkids and wants them to walk in the ways of God but we give you the glory because even though grandmama brought them you let them and God we thank you for this day that you have made and we bless you for these two beautiful young ladies and we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus name amen Someone bless the name of the Lord for these that have come. We give glory and honor and praise to all of these, to all of these that have come forward and to all of you. We give God so much praise and honor today. And again, I ask that you forgive me for my little old voice today. It was strong on yesterday, I promise. Um, But if you are a visitor worshiping with us for the first time, We just want to honor you, and you don't have to say anything, but if you would just stand, we definitely want to recognize you. So if you are a first-time visitor, will you please stand? Remain standing, please. So to all of you, we thank God that you are here today worshiping with us. We hope that something has been done or something has been said to impact your journey Our doors are always open, and we would love to see your faces again. Hey, church, let's bless the name of the Lord for our visitors on today. You may be seated. For those that were baptized, can you please stand? Church family, can we bless the name of the Lord for those that were baptized on today? Just a few brief announcements before we uh, partake in the Lord's Supper. 
this Wednesday night, <clears throat> this Wednesday night. So here's, here's what we're going to do Wednesday night. Reverend Patricia Spears has been just blessing us in the book of Ruth. And we are in Ruth chapter number three. Uh, so originally I was going to do a chapter. She was going to do a chapter. Uh, she's going to continue through the book of Ruth. She's doing an amazing job. So she's not here to hear this, but um, she is doing an amazing job with the book of Ruth. So what we're going to do. Uh, this Wednesday night, 6.30, as she goes through the book of Ruth with our adults, I am going to invite our teenagers, uh, starting from the age of 14, 14 through 18, our high school students, I'm inviting you, and pastor is going to teach, uh, teach our teens, so if you are between the ages of 14 through 18, we are inviting you this Wednesday night at 6.30, come to Strong Tower, and I'm going to teach a lesson as the adults are in here, our youth, I will take care of the youth, and I'm also going to begin, we're going to begin a young adult Bible study as well, from 18 to What's young adult? About 25. I remember I in the, I remember at I remember at, at, at my former church, I was uh, I was about 36 still in the youth and young adult choir. So <clears throat> so we would do something for our youth and young adults as well. Next Sunday is Youth Sunday. Youth Sunday. I thought somebody would have clapped. Okay. Uh, next Sunday is Youth Sunday. So we are going to make it a huge deal. So on next Saturday, we are having a pizza party here at the church. Um, we will have a pizza party and fun and games for our youth. All of the youth, what if my, I got some kids, they don't go to Strong Tower, you better bring them anyway. All you have to do is go to the website at www.mystrongtower.org and register, register your children. I know you stood as visitors, but I want you all to come and partake. All of our, all of our kids, we're going to have an amazing time this coming uh, Saturday, Saturday from 2 to 5 p.m., a pizza party and games, and then on the Sunday morning morning on that Sunday morning not only will we have our uh, our youth day but after that we're gonna have a big old brunch for everybody look at your neighbor say everybody look at look, look at somebody else and say everybody so we will have I think we're gonna have chicken I think we'll have pan pancakes and eggs and waffles and toast and all of that good stuff that's gonna happen after church next Sunday so I'm gonna go out on a limb I think y'all gonna be here next Sunday y'all look hungry anyway so so we're gonna make these events a weekend event every month for our youth we want to we may not have a brunch every month but we want the they, we want that second Sunday to be a weekend event. We want to bring our kids, love on them, teach them about the ways of Christ. And so we want that to happen. That's going to happen next Sunday. Wear your Strong Tower Ministry shirts. Pastor, I don't have a, a shirt. Great. The bookstore is open. 30 minutes prior and 30 minutes after service, the bookstore is located on my right, your left. You will go down to the bookstore. I think Key has already gone down there and get you a Strong Tower shirt. We will wear that on next week. Our men's ministry will begin on the third Saturday of the month. It's going to happen on the first. Hey, man, I wish I could talk louder, but I can't. Uh, first and third Saturdays of every month that will happen from 10 to 12 a.m., our initial a uh, men's ministry meeting will be March the 19th. So we are inviting all of our men to uh, be a part of that again, March 19th from 10 to 12 a.m. We are continuing to pray for the family uh, of Verna Campbell, our beloved member of here for about six and a half, almost seven years. I did her homegoing celebration on yesterday, so we ask that you will continue uh, to pray uh, for that family. We got some real good stuff. Family and Friends Day will happen on March the 27th, the fourth Sunday of this month at 9 30 so we are asking we are having uh, you probably look and say pastor now, well we gonna put some friends at um but family and friends day will be uh march the 27th and we will actually have a generational sunday i will give you more details on that but whatever your generation is whether generation x gen z baby boomers you will be uh, associated with the color and you'll come to church and you'll wear your color that day so we're really gonna make a real fun day out of it uh family and 
and Friends Day, March 27th. That will be a generational Sunday as well. So we look forward to that. Last thing that I have, next to last thing, that will be youth rehearsal. Youth rehearsal at 6 o'clock. Youth rehearsal, si rehearsal at 6 o'clock because they will sing next Sunday. So we are excited about that. Last thing before we uh, continue forward. Um, we have wanted, our church has wanted uh, to purchase some land uh, here for quite some time. Um, and I am pleased to say um, that through your giving, your generous contributions, um, we were able to purchase the land that is right next to our youth facility that we actually, oh, I thought somebody would have gave some glory on that. Okay. Um, we were able to purchase that land. It went up for auction. We have been trying to purchase this land for about two and a half, three years. And so we were finally able to purchase that land. So that land is in the church's name. So Strong Tower got some property. Amen. So now the question is, what will we do with that land? We will actually uh, get input from you. There are some things that we're really thinking about doing uh, to really make that land uh, a beautiful piece and something that that will benefit our church and our church family. So we just really are encouraged to know that in the span of, we've been in existence soon to be eight years, in the span of four years while we've been here at the, while we've been here at the church, we've been able to put a new roof on the church and the youth building. We've been able to upgrade electrical. We've done flooring upgrades. Um, now we've, able, we've been able to purchase land and property. We've done all of these things with no notes, no bills. As Randy Moss says, straight cash, homie. So we are very thankful and blessed that we are able to do these things in the name of the Lord. Strong Tower is a blessed place, and we thank God for the people that he has uh, assembled here, and we give God the glory and honor. On Monday, tomorrow, the first Monday of the month, our singles ministry will meet. Our singles ministry will meet here at the church in the multipurpose room from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, Danielle, uh, Danielle Juno, my classmate, will, is, is leading and facilitating that. So again, all singles, we are inviting you uh, to come and be a part of our singles ministry. A great opportunity that we have to be able to partake in the Lord's Supper. As we partake in, in this Lord's Supper, we remember the great sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. The drink that we drink, it is a reflection of his shed blood. The bread that we eat, it is a reflection of his pierced body. So at this point, let us make ready for the Lord's Supper. If you have not received the cup, please raise your hand. stand for the reading of the word. Our reading will come from the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. And when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. 
And he said unto them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I shall not eat again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks and taken it and shared it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine now until the kingdom of God has come. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after he had eaten and said unto them, Take this, which is poured out for you, is a new covenant of my blood. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We can't thank you enough. We try, but we can't. We glorify you. We glorify you for everything you've done for us. The good times, the bad times, the heartaches, the joyfulness, the prayers, the grace. We can't thank you enough. We ask now that you will bless each and every one present under the sound of my strong voice. Bless those who were baptized this morning. Bless those who came and gave their life to God. We do it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. On that faithful evening, they did drink, eat and drink. Let us do likewise. Father, we thank you. Oh, for those of you who don't know, our uh, giving boxes are in the rear. You can uh, your tithes and offering will be dropped in those giving boxes. This is your moment to show God how much you love Him as much as He loves you. And also, they have the uh, little I don't know what they call those things. I'm too old to know that. Hue cards. Now unto him, now unto him who present us faultless before his glory. To the wise God be dominion, majesty, power, henceforth, now and forevermore. And the entire church said, Amen. 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 